ほらルフィ今一緒に海賊になる仲間を探してるんだ
Izuku's blood ran cold when he heard this. Because Izuku well what these three skills could be describing, but it was terrifying to think about, but it couldn't be his quirk as that's rumored to be blood-related. So Izuku was forced to accept the horrible truth. Stain the hero killer had Haki. Izuku had no way of proving this, but there was no other way in his mind. Besides, it's not like Haki is sorely his. Anyone can unlock the colors of observation and armament, and it looks like Stain was like him bring the one in a million to have conquers as well. Arg, this meant there were only a handful of people who could actually beat him Izuku included. Even if Izuku came across the hero killer, then he'd have to be extremely cautious as the villain had the one thing that could render any defense his devil fruits gave him worthless. Izuku was cut off from his thoughts as he felt a tug coming from his pant leg, looking down he saw Irai who looked terrified at the prospect of him running into the villain. Smiling softly Izuku bent down and rubbed her head soothingly. Don't worry Irai he won't get me. I am the strongest in the world after all. Iri looked at him and nodded gaining a look of determination on her face, fully convinced her brother won't lose. Izuku seeing this felt his smile grow inch as he and his sister went to eat breakfast. Soon it was time to head to you, and after bidding his sister and mother goodbye he left. It didn't take long to arrive and Izuku soon found himself back in his classroom. Given they were given the day after the us joff, there was only thing they were discussing. So, uh, did anyone see the news last night? Toru asked hesitantly with most of the class nodding. Well, I mean, it was kinda cool how we got a few seconds of screen time, right? I mean, I guess we could be considered celebrities, right? Surviving such a big deal? Denki awkwardly asked with Kirishima slowly nodding. Please, the media doesn't give a damn about us. The only thing they care about is how villains infiltrated a hero school and the staff was too incompetent to do anything. Kyoka hissed with a scowl. She has a point. Siro begin I mean look around we can't exactly say it was something people should expect from first years. The tape user pointed out that with the exception of Izuku everyone had some kind of injury, even Bakugu and Todoroki. The only reason Izuku doesn't have any injuries is because of his Devil Fruits regeneration abilities. Come on guys, can we please stop talking about this? Minta pleaded with Bakugu hissing at him to shut up much more subdued than he normally would. Still though I'm glad we had you there Midoriya. I don't want to think about what would happen if you weren't there. Sato said with the rest of the class agreeing though Bakugu did it silently. Izuku just waved it off saying he was happy to help. Soon it was time for class to begin and the class was wondering who was going to sub for Aizawa when to their surprise the man in question stepped through the door. When questioned the man merely said his health wasn't a factor and proceeded to start class. Though privately Aizawa did share some of his students' anger. Finding it completely illogical and incompetent of teachers fully licensed heroes at that to not realize something was wrong despite all the signs. Anyway, you shouldn't let your guards down. The fight isn't over yet. More villains? The class though with most of them ready to activate their quirks. It's time for the U, a sports festival. Aizawa finished. Don't scare us like that. The class shouted though though were relieved. Oh hell yeah I'm fired up, Kirishima yelled ready to kick some butt. Wait a minute dude, Kaminari said bringing the red head down to earth. Are we seriously doing this right after an invasion? Kayoka asked annoyed at how light of the situation the school was making of this. Yeah, what's stopping the villains from doing this again? Ojiro asked concerned. Apparently the school wants to do this to show the public the crisis has passed. Aizawa spoke furious at how the school was trying to sweep the incident that nearly coast two pro heroes and an entire class of heroes in training under the rug. Besides from what I'm told they're beefing up security this year with pro heroes from all over, Aizawa explained. Minta still wasn't convinced are we really going to having some stupid festival right after a villain attack? Izuku turned to him you do know how important this is right Minta. He questioned with the grape-haired boy nodding in confirmation. 
Our sports festival is one of the most viewed televised events in the world, second only to the Battle Towers World Championship, Aizawa explained. From there Aizawa went on to explain how pros from all over the country would be watching and it would be the prefect chance to get scouted, and there were three chances in their lifetime to show off what they could do. After class was dismissed the students talked about how pumped they were for the festival with Yuraraka seemingly possessed. Izuku could understand where they were coming from he had the look they had many times growing up. After that Izuku and Ida asked Yuraraka something that's been on their mind for a while, why she wanted to be a hero. To their surprise she was in it for the money. She went on to explain she wanted to help support her family who owned a struggling construction company. By the end of it Tenya was in tears and clapping while praising her for her kind heart and Izuku told her it was a truly noble goal. Ha ha ha, young Midoriya is here. All Might shouted as he suddenly appeared around the corner. Oh it's All Might. Yuraraka said surprised while Ida gave a polite greeting while Izuku just nodded. All Might seeing these reactions mentally sighed. He wasn't arrogant or anything, but seeing these only slightly surprised showed how far he's fallen in their eyes and is a reminder of his failure. Shaking his head All Might spoke again. Young Midoriya I was wondering if you could join me for lunch. There's some things I want to talk to you about. The number one hero requested. Izuku turned toward his two shocked friends and asked if they minded to which both shocked their heads. Seeing this Izuku followed the number one hero while Yoraraka and Ida went to the cafeteria. Cafeteria. So what do you think All Might wanted to ask with Izuku? Yoraraka questioned with Ida taking a thinking pose not knowing someone was listening in. Well it could have something to do with that bird villain Midoriya fought at the Asuki. You remember the villain covered in hands said it was designed to kill All Might? He was probably just asking Izuku about him. It could also do with the fact that parts of Izuku's quirk seem a lot like All Might's quirk. Maybe that caused All Might to take a liking to him. He truly is lucky. Tenya exclaimed with Ochako nodding in agreement. All Might and Izuku Midoriya, is there a connection? Shoto Todoroki thought as he listened in while trying to figure out the mystery with Izuku and All Might. The two had just entered an empty room and sat as All Might prepared some tea while both were trying to figure out what to say to each other. In the end, it was Izuku who broke the ice. So you're looking better in a not about to die of starvation kinda or way. Izuku spoke as he looked at Tashinori in his power down form. Although unlike when they meet nearly a year ago, he wasn't a skeleton thin with sunken eyes. Instead he had a body very similar to Izuku. All Might grinned. Yeah well after you healed my injury I didn't waste any time in getting back into shape. It's gotten to the point I can use one for all as long as I wish. All Might finished happily that he could get the most out of Quirk for the remaining time he had it. Izuku nodded. So what did you want to talk about? Izuku asked causing All Might to frown about what he was about to say. All Might took a deep breath before speaking. I nor the rest of the staff have any excuse for what happened at the Asuji. We truly failed as heroes that day. Young Midoriya, I can't apologize. Shut up. Two simple words, but they were so cold that it gave Toshinori pause as he looked into Izuku's eyes and was actually taken back by the fury in Izuku's eyes. I'm not the one you and the teachers should be apologizing to. I would have been fine on my own, it's my classmates you should be apologizing toward. They don't have any experience fighting people like I do and could have been seriously tortured if not killed. Izuku growled causing All Might to lower his head in shame, but Izuku wasn't done yet. But you know what really makes me mad the most? The fact that the staff here seems more concerned with their own reputations than the fact that twenty students and two almost died. In fact, isn't that why the sports festival is being held so soon to make people forget about UA's messed up? Izuku took a breath to calm down before saying his last piece on the subject. When I first accepted this power, I told you of my problem with today's heroes that only seem concerned with money and fame, 
but you promised me there were genuine heroes still out there who became heroes for the right reasons. That relit the fire in my soul to be a hero. But the only heroes I've seen like that are 13 Sensei and Aizawa Sensei. So don't offer any apologizes or promises that it won't happen again, we don't want to hear it. Instead let your actions speak for you. Through it all All Might was silent knowing his successor was right. The staff failed and are trying to cover it up so they don't seem as incompetent. Present Mike even suggested that they say the teachers arrived and took are of the villains and saved the students at the meeting they had to discuss what to do. This earned him a broken nose and black eye from an enraged Aizawa who threatened to go to the media and tell them everything that happened. The staff was shocked to see him there and when questioned why he wasn't resting his response shut everyone up. And why the hell would I trust you with my students? The meeting pretty much ended after that with the threat clear in everyone's mind. So is that all you wanted or was there something else? Izuku questioned changing the subject with All Might shaking his head. What's your plan for the sports festival? All Might questioned with Izuku raising an eyebrow. To win, obviously. Izuku said simply with All Might nodding. I want you to think of this sports festival as your debut. Pros not to mention the whole county will be watching. You're known around the world as the strongest man in the world, but I want you to think of this sports festival as your debut as a hero. To say to the world I am here. As the future number one hero. All might finish dramatically and seriously. Sure. Izuku spoke calmly while drinking his tea causing All Might to fall over in shock. I was expecting a little more of a response. All Might said annoyed that his speech is being taken so lightly. Izuku just rolled his eyes. Good grief you're taking this too seriously. I was planning on winning anyway so it's not like it matters. Besides remember what I said about actions speaking for you. Izuku spoke with a grin causing All Might to grin in response. Yeah I get it, I'm sure you'll win. All Might spoke with Izuku nodding and getting up to leave. Right Will if that's all I'll be off. Toshinori nodded. Of course young Midor trailed off as his eyes widened in shock as he remembered something important. So important he actually went into his hero form. Wait young Midoriya. I have something to tell you that's very important. It involves the next step in making one for all your own. Izuku stoped and turned around. All Might was only truly serious about a couple of things, and one of them was one for all. So what is it, you know I'm still having those problems with Ofer right? Izuku questioned with All Might nodding having managed to calm down enough to exit his hero form. Yes, however I'm sure you're ready for this next step. It could actually be considered your rite of passage. The mark of one for all truly becoming yours. All Might told Izuku who found himself nervously swallowing a lump in his throat. Okay, and that is? Izuku asked both nervous and excited. Toshinori looked his successor dead in the eyes. Young Midoriya you must. Choose your smash theme. All Might finished in his hero form. Izuku's face was the flattest All Might had ever seen it with a slight eyebrow twitch every so often. Goodbye. The student said simply as he got up to head to the exit, causing the pro to panic and tell him to stay. Listen young Midoriya, it might seem pointless, but everyone who has had this quirk has come it. Nana did it as did her predecessors before her. It's something that means something to you like how I named mine after certain states from the US that mean something to me. So please take this seriously. All Might finished. Izuku seeing the look in his teacher's eyes merely sighed and nodded before leaving. Leaving a happy all might behind. After class. So something I can help you people with. Izuku asked dryly at the horde of people in front of their classroom door. The students outside were shocked. There were rumors and sightings of Akuma being here, but most just chalked it up to a transformation quirk. So most were shocked and more than a little intimidated to see him there. So the rumors are true. The world champion does go to Yua. A tired voice spoke out with crowd parting to reveal a boy with purple hair and bags under his eyes. I'm Shinso Hitoshi from General Studies. The now named Shinso spoke. Izuku Midoriya. It's a pleasure. 
Izuku said as he held out his hand, to which Shinso shock as a small smile came to his face. Likewise, it's nice to know not everyone in the hero course is full of themselves, Shinso told him. Hey, don't worry about it. That's just Bakugou. Izuku responded which earned a F.U. Deku from said explosion user. Ignoring this, Izuku continued. So what can we do for you? Izuku asked, causing Shinso to chuckle. Oh, nothing. Just came by to offer my declaration on war. Shinso finished shocking everyone but Izuku who figured it was something like that. See I wanted to be in the hero course but I failed the entrance exam and had to settle for general studies. However this is my second chance. If I perform well enough I'll be transferred to the hero course. Of course that means someone would have to be transferred out. So be prepared. Shinso finished with some of his classmates freaking out slightly. Now that is interesting. And you're not wrong. If you outperform someone in the hero course you deserve to take their place. Izuku spoke surprising everyone there. However you're making one fatal mistake. Izuku warned him causing Shinso to raise his eyebrow. Oh, and what would that be? He questioned while Izuku grew a smirk on his face. You're underestimating us. Izuku told him when suddenly someone else decided to enter the conversation. Hey! I'm Tetsutetsu from Class 1B and we heard you guys fought some villains. Is that true? Tetsutetsu yelled as he appeared. He had sliver hair, sharp teeth and bone fragments around his eyes. Suddenly everyone in Class 1A gained a certain steel in his their eyes as they turned their attention to Tetsutetsu who along with everyone else took a step back when they saw it. Yeah man it's true. What about it? Kirishima asked with an edge to his voice. Just don't get cocky and think you're better than us. Tetsutetsu stuttered, even you Akuma. Noted. Izuku said simply as he and the rest of his class left each thinking about how to train for the sports festival. Time skip, two weeks. It was the day of the sports festival and Izuku could say he was ready as he and the rest of his class had been training their bodies minds and quirks to hell and back to prepare. Izuku himself had spent every waking moment he could in the fight pit at the battle tower, a never-ending free-for-all where fighters could come and go as they pleased. It was the perfect place to brush up on techniques and a few devil fruits he was a little rusty with. Right now he was getting ready to head to the school. Inko was telling him she would record the whole thing in HD and Iri was running around shouting that he was going to win. Suddenly Izuku's haki picked up three signatures heading toward their apartment causing him to grin as he recognized them. He got up to open the door as the three arrived. Good to see you, Amand, Dabai, Toga, as he greeted the three at the door. Dabai and Toga were a couple of friends of his from the battle towers and were actually two of the ones who guarded Eri and his mother the night of the raid on Overhaul. Dabai was a fighter on the 200th floor. He could easily go higher but due to his sadistic side he stayed because he liked crushing newbies. Toga wasn't a fighter but an employee who was part of the punishment force. If someone cheated or tried to weasel out of their gambling debts, it was the punishment force's job to deal with them. Izu. Toga suddenly launched herself at Izuku with a knife in her hand. Izuku didn't even blink as he suddenly caught her wrist and twisted the knife out of it before placing the knife down. Hello, Toga, Izuku said as he put a pouting Toga down. Inko, having gotten used to this over the years, didn't even blink as he greeted her guest. Hello, Toga dear, Dabai. She greeted pleasantly before her expression went flat. Amon she finished dryly towards the woman dating her son despite her age. Toga responded by giving Inko while shouting a greeting while Dabai just waved while muttering a thanks for having him. Amon meanwhile gave Izuku a peck on the cheek causing Inko's eyebrow to twitch. Mr. Dabai, Stamand. Iri greeted the two while tackling Dabai in a hug who fumbled to center her despite the fact the little girl did this every time she saw him after meeting and taking an immediate liking to the two. What about me, Iri? Toga questioned only to receive a TCH from Iri as she walked away after Dabai set her down. Iri never liked Toga after meeting her, 
from her creepy personality to the fact she kept trying cut Izuku every time Toga saw him. Iri also ignored the fact that Dabai had a worse personality and tried to do much worse to Izuku when the spared. Something Toga brought up regularly. Toga could only sulk with Dabai snickering slightly before going to help Inko out with any snacks she was preparing for her guest despite her protest. So where's the old man? I though he was coming here, Izuku asked his manger. He said he wanted to go watch in person. Said he could give any criticism he had in person, and as they came to him. This caused Izuku to pinch the bridge of his nose in annoyance while muttering naturally. Before heading for the door though not before Amon saying she had something to discuss with him later. Well guys, it's time. Wish me luck, Izuku said with each doing just that. He was just out of the door when he heard Dabai speak. Hey Izuku. Izuku stoked and turned eyebrow raised. Dabai grinned kick some butt. Izuku smirked and nodded as he left. At Yua. The school was packed to the walls as civilians, reporters and heroes alike ready to see one of the biggest events in the world. The students would have been swarmed but luckily they were led in a different way but they did get a good look at the main entrance. Izuku winced when he saw some of the merchandise he endorsed as well as his memorabilia were selling very well. In fact he saw MT Lady buying a ton of it. Momo, Tenya and Ochako who he met at the entrance were trying to snap him out of his funk when his haki picked up an insanely powerful energy flying toward him. Izuku had just enough time to cross his arms before the energy force slammed into him sending skidding back and dust to kick up, blocking the attacker from view. The remaining three were shocked for a second before snapping out of it and assuming battle stances. Though before they could do anything they heard Izuku speak, Damn it, old man. What the hell is wrong with you? Izuku growled, showing no sigh of damage or injury aside from sown dust. Ha ha ha. Please I had to make sure spending all this time playing hero hasn't made you soft. Besides, as your trainer and your grandpa, I reserve the right to attack you whenever I want. The man in the dust spoke as the dust cleared and the attacker finally came into view. It's Garp the Fist. Momo, Tenya and Ochako shouted shocked to see this legend here. He was once held the title as strongest man in the world, the very title Izuku now holds. He was also known to regularly help out heroes. One of the most recent and well-known is when he saved the pro hero team known as Water Hose and breaking nearly every bone in the villain's body with a singe punch. Sir, it is an honor to meet you. Tenya bowed with Momo and Ochako doing the same with Garp just laughing it off. Ha ha. Thank you it's always nice to meet my grandson's friends. He grinned with the three becoming shocked at the grandson comment having missed it the first time. He's not my real grandfather. He trained me from when I was a kid but that's it. Anything else he says is just him losing what will mind he has left. Izuku shot down which earned him another punch from an enraged garp. Cheeky brat. I trained you the same way I would train any son or grandson I had. Therefore you are my grandson. He shouted with Izuku's friends just sweat dropping at the logic. Izuku just grunted. Anyway old man, grandpa, whatever anyway why are you here? Amon told me what you told her but I'm not buying it. Izuku questioned with Garp letting out another laugh. Figured me out, did you boy? Well you're right, I'm hoping to run into a friend of mine. Haven't seen him in twenty years, but I heard his son goes here so I figured I'd come and see if I could meet him. The man laughed at the look of shock on their faces. I can't believe it. Izuku spoke with the other nodding and Garp just smiling. That is until Izuku spoke next. Who could put up with you long enough to be considered a friend? He asked with genuine confusion. Brat. Garp roared at him trying to punch him again. This time though Garp hit smoke as he went right through Izuku. Well that's enough comedy for one day. Izuku said as he turned to his classmates ignoring the old man who kept trying to punch him. Come on we need to get ready. Izuku spoke toward his friends who after a brief pause followed behind him leaving behind a angry garp. Disrespectful brat, talking to his own grandpa like that. 
He took a deep breath before grinning. Hey, whatever. Time to go find the matchstick. Locker room. It was time. They were all dressed in their gym clothes and waiting to be called. Mina complained that she wanted to wear her costume, but Ojiro explained it was to keep things fair. Suddenly Tenya entered and told everyone it was time to go. However, just before Izuku could lead the class out, Todoroki stepped in front of Izuku, which caused him to raise an eyebrow. Need something, Todoroki? Todoroki was silent for a moment before speaking. Midoriya, I think it goes without you outclass me in every field, but I will find a way to beat you. Todoroki finished with a glare. Oh, what's this? Siro asked with a grin. Is our second strongest declaring war on the champ? Izuku chuckled challenge accepted, but a word of warning. Izuku said seriously as he narrowed his eyes at the half and half. Come at me with your full power or else you'll be wasting everyone's time. Izuku spoke seriously. Come on guys. Kirishima spoke up with an uneasy smile. I think you're underestimating a little too much. The hardening quirk user spoke. I'm not here to make friends Todoroki finished causing Izuku to sigh before leading his class to the stadium. Welcome everyone to the UA Sports Festival. I'm your host Present Mike, and are you ready for this? Present Mike stated while trying to hype up the crowd, and judging from the cheers it was working. First up, they're no strangers to danger from the Hero Course Class 1A. He introduced getting cheers from the crowd, which only went up drastically when they saw Izuku leading the class. Different crowd, same atmosphere. It never changes, Izuku muttered while Tenya was talking about being able to perform well while being observed like this. While Kirishima was pumping himself up and Katsuki just smirked ready to win. Next they may not have had as much time in the spotlight, but they're still chalked full of talent also from the Hero Course Class 1B. After that it's General Studies CDE, Support Class FGH and finally Business Lesson IGK. Present Mike finished his introduction while also introducing the latter three courses quickly and dismissively, pissing off the courses and Izuku for how biased the teacher was. It's time for the introduction speech. Spoke a female voice said which turned out to be Midnight the R-rated hero and umpire for the first years causing many people to cheer and say how lucky the first years were. Someone should say something to Midnight Sensei about what she's wearing. Kirishima spoke. Yeah that outfit should definitely come with a warning. Kamari said. Is that really appropriate attire for a high school game? Takoyami questioned. Silence everyone, Midnight ordered. Now for the student pledge we have Izuku Midoriya. She yelled causing everyone to cheer and Izuku to become incredibly annoyed. I guess it makes sense you did place force in the hero course, Siro said. Just say what's on your mind. Tenya advised as Izuku grunted and made his way to the platform. Here you go. Midnight said to him with a wink as she handed him the microphone. Izuku took it while ignoring the wink causing her to pout. I'll keep this brief. A minute ago present Mike introduced all the first-year classes, and the way he was so dismissive of the non-hero courses really pissed me off. Izuku stated shocking pretty much everyone there expect Garp who was grinning in anticipation at the verbal ass-kicking Izuku was about to give out. Let me ask everyone here a question. Can anyone here in a single word describe every student here myself included? because I know the perfect word that I can use to describe every student here. The word is rival. This caused everyone's eyes from the students to the spectators, teachers, and pro heroes to widen in shock and surprise. I see students from every course from hero to general studies ready to give everything they have to win. With that alone, I'm more than happy and honored to call them my rivals. And when someone a teacher no less dismisses a rival of mine, so easily it really pisses me off. Izuku's speech was meet with pure silence even as he handed the microphone back to Midnight who looked lost in thought. However the second he reached the steps, the stadium erupted in a deafening roar of cheers and applause. Kirishima and Tenya were moved to tears by his speech with Kirishima bawling about how manly it was while Tenya was going on how he was honored to have so many rivals. 
The rest of the class, while not as inspired as those two, were ready to show what they were capable of. Unknown to Class 1A, almost every other student was feeling pumped along with rethinking their thoughts of Class 1A. Through all this present Mike was muttering apologies into his microphone with promises not to do it again. A wonderful speech, and with that it's time to begin the first round. Midnight proclaimed as the randomizer started spinning. Soon it stoked with the first event being an obstacle course around the stadium with the only rule being don't leave the course. This is it. Izuku thought as he got into position at the staring line. Time to show the world you are here. All might thought from the stands as the first light faded. Ready. Do your best, Izuku. Inko mutters at her home while waiting with bated breath with Dabai, Toga, and Anand. Set. Let's do this, Izuku thought as the last light faded. Go. The sports festival had begun. The minute the word go was heard a giant shockwave blew every student back several feet and knocked them on the ground. What the heck was that? Every student was knocked off their feet. What could have caused that? Present Mike yelled in surprise and confusion that was echoed by everyone watching with the exception of one. That would be Izuku Midoriya gaining an early lead. Aizawa said simply, and it was true as the cameras showed Izuku already exiting the tunnel and running at great speeds down the course. Incredible. I guess our champ wanted to start things with a bang. Present Mike said, and the audience roared with cheers. That, and he recognized the first obstacle and wanted to avoid it. Aizawa said simply confusing Present Mike and the audience. Meanwhile, the students were getting back to their feet, and after hearing them that they were already falling behind Midoriya, they scrambled to catch up. Arg, Midoriya's not holding back this time. Kirishima shouted as he and everyone else ran for the entrance only to meet the obstacle Aizawa mentioned earlier. You're in my way. Stop shoving, damn it. Get the hell out of my way, you extras. The students were jammed pack in the entrance and no one was able to get any headway. The audience finally understood what Aizawa was talking about. So that's what you meant, Aizawa. It's an obstacle that's not an obstacle. Present Mike shouted with Aizawa nodding in agreement. Right, Midoriya probably figured out what would happen so he made sure he would avoid it. Back with the students they were trying to figure out how to get out of this when suddenly a torrent of ice blasted through the tunnel and out came Todoroki. Shoto Todoroki is the first to leave the pack and did it with a brilliant display of his quirk. And it looks like he isn't the only one. Hearing this Todoroki looked behind him to see many of his classmates and students from other classes had avoided it. Guess I underestimated them a little too much. He muttered before shaking his head and facing forward. He didn't have time to worry about them right now. All Todoroki was concerned about right now was catching up to Midoriya who was so far ahead he was basically a dot in Todoroki's sight at this point. You already blindsided me once today, I'm not going to let it happen again. Especially with my dear old dad watching, Todoroki thought darkly as he raced to catch up with Izuku. With Izuku. So Todoroki's in second, not surprising Izuku thought as he had deactivated one for all after he left the tunnel and was now running at his normal speed and had just entered a clearing when he jumped back to avoid a robotic limb. The pack leader Izuku Midoriya has reached the first true obstacle, the Robo Inferno. Present Mike shouted and the crowd erupted into cheers ready to see some action from the world champion. Robo Inferno Hunt. Fitting name Izuku thought dryly before smirking and raising a hand toward the advancing robots. Repel. Suddenly all nearby robots were blasted back and some crashed into other robots destroying them. Izuku didn't waste a second as he ran forward and started jumping from robot to robot though the weird thing was the spot where he kicked each robot had turned to stone. Izuku smirked glad to see Hancock's fruit work on these like it did on the pacifistia. He had just gotten past the last of the zero pointers when an idea suddenly hit him. Smirking Izuku turned around and to the audience confusion put his fingers to his lips before pulling his finger back where a giant heart appeared drew back as Izuku pulled his arm back like on would do when they're about to shoot an arrow. 
I don't know what Izuku Minori is doing, but he really should be moving for oh my god. Present Mike finished as he and everyone grew shocked as dozens of arrows flew from the giant heart and hit every robot turning them all to stone. Amazing. He stopped every robot in a second. Was he trying to impress the pros? I'd say he certainly did though given his reputation I don't think he has to try very hard. Present Mike said and Aizawa sighed and shook his head when he heard his fellow teacher say this and it only grew worse when he saw some pros agreeing with him. Look again. It's obvious why he did that if you think about it. Aizawa finished tiredly with some pros nodding in agreement understanding why he did it. Shortly after Izuku left the rest of the students with Shoto in the lead reached the Robo Inferno. At first they thought it would be simple with all the robots turned to stone. That is until... Targets acquired. It was an entire new wave of bots ready to stop the students who were currently freaking out. It's the zero pointers from the practical exams. I thought Midoriya took care of all the bots. How can you afford all this? Ha ha ha. Do you really think we'd throw all the robots at the people in the front? We gotta give the ones in the back a chance. Present Mike laughed at the panicked expressions on the students' faces. Shoto was the first to act and threw down a layer of ice that froze many of the robots in place causing many students to cheer until he revealed he did it on purpose so the robots would be thrown off balance and he could get ahead. Unfortunately as he was about to move on Shoto heard a large crumbling sound as a shadow covered him and his eyes widened in shock. It turns out all the robots he knocked off place crashed into the statues causing them to crumble raining down stone on the students. And there you go. Midoriya knew that there would be chaos so he turned them into stone to add an extra obstacle. Aizawa explained with many nodding in understanding. Back with the students they were currently freaking out. Not only did they have to fight the robots, but now they had to deal with falling giant stone robots. No one knew how to deal with that. Well, almost no one. Shoto threw up a giant wave of ice to guard against the robots as he was able to get through safely. Shoto Todoroki has cleared the obstacle. It may have slowed him down, but he was able to clear it in the end. As expected of a student let in through recommendation, present Mike proclaimed to the cheering crowd. Back with the students they were cursing Todoroki having made things harder for them, Hey, where the hell is class 1A? One of the students asked having just noticed they weren't there. The other students having seen this looked around until they're over there, running through the robots. Tetsutetsu yelled to the shock of the rest who turned and saw it was true. Class 1A was running through the robots while getting rid of any who got in their ways with various methods. Those with main combat quirks just tore their way through such as Bakugu, Aoyama Kirishima, Ida, Shoji, Sato, and Ojiro. Others got rid of the robots through different uses of their quirks. Momo creates a shield made out of titanium alloy with a bladed edge that let her her defend and attack in one. Denki short-circuited every robot he touched having training like crazy to stop frying his brain, while Kayoka used her jacks to pump her heartbeat into them overloading each bot. Ochako and Suyu once again teamed up having a much easier time as with all the experience Ochako gained in the Uschi and the training she put in after her limit increased big time. Other chose to avoid combat altogether to try to make up some distance from the leaders. Siro, Mainta and Takoyami climbed the zero pointers and then used their quirks to get down quickly past the bots. Mina skated on acid she produced from the holes in her shoes to easily get past the slow robots. Koda and Toru were the last of their class, but they still got through. Toru simply used her invisibility to get past then whole Koda had birds fly in front of the robots, obstructing him from their sensors. The other students just stared, shocked at how they didn't even hesitate and how they effortlessly got through. Incredible. All of class Wana had gotten through like it was nothing. Eraserhead your students are incredible. Present Mike shouted over Crowd cheering the awesome display of quirks. They may look scary, but at the end of day they're just large chucks of metal and with a well-placed hit can be taken down easily. Snipe said. 
Indeed, 13 replied giving the same kind of one-word answers they have been giving since the us causing snipe to sigh before returning to watching the race. It's not that Class 1B aren't skilled, all might thought. Class 1 and knows not to hesitate. They've learned that if you do so for a single second, it could cost you everything. They've already gone through the terror and horror of the unknown and managed to get get out of it all on their own. That knowledge and experience is what's pushing them forward, Aizawa explained. With Izuku. Sounds like everyone's starting to catch up. Izuku muttered before suddenly coming to a complete stop. In front of him was a large chasm with multiple platforms connected by ropes. And Izuku Midoriya has reached the second obstacle, the fall, where if anyone should fall in means instant disqualification. Present Mike explained the next event. Izuku just stared at the fall before smirking as arms morphed into flames and morphed into wings. Izuku jumped and took off easily clearing the fall without an issue and continued on flying to increase the his lead. Look at that. Izuku Midoriya flies right over the fall without an issue and increases his lead. Though the question now is how will he clear the minefield? Where the mines while not that powerful are loud enough to make someone pee their pants. So what do you think Eraserhead? How will he clear it? Present Mike questioned Aizawa who looked at him and spoke in the driest tone possible. Probably by flying. Aizawa said simply as Izuku did just that and landed on the other side causing Present Mike to sulk. Izuku wasted no time and used started using his quirk to stockpile power to give himself a boast to ensure a victory. However, it was not one for all he used as evidence by the purple glow he was giving off. No, the power he was using was that of the power power fruit. One of its abilities is to stockpile and multiply one's power up to one million percent. The power power fruit is actually one of the reasons he was able to get the hang of one for all so easily, having already a power similar just on a much larger scale. It also helped the power fruit didn't break your bones every time you went overboard. Izuku was back in the stadium in a matter of seconds. The winner of the first round is Izuku Midoriya. Let's hear it for him people. Present Mike shouted over the roaring applause of the audience. Izuku's gaze landed on All Might who looked like he was just barely keeping himself from jumping in the air from excitement and happiness at Izuku's performance. Izuku just smiled and rolled his eyes. Good grief, what's the big deal? I already told him I planned on winning, Izuku thought as he went over to the wall to wait for the other students. At the Midoriya household, they were all celebrating. Inko was crying tears of happiness while Iri ignoring how she usually is with Toga was jumping around in a circle with her shouting. He did it. He did it. Danny was smirking happy that his friend is giving it his all and not holding back. Amand meanwhile was smirking while also on her phone already setting up interviews after getting calls from various talk shows after they saw Izuku's performance. Already thinking of all the press he'll get if he continues to win. The work of a manager is never done. In a dark room Tamura Shigaraki was glaring at the image of Izuku with utter hatred and loathing. Medical gauze wrapped around his broken nose and a metal brace around his chest. His master told him to watch the sports to get an idea of future heroes he might face. That damn brat. He muttered scratching his neck with a new left metallic sliver hand while his his right hand was large clunky and looked to be made of iron. I'll unalive you the next time I see you. He said scratching so hard he started to bleed. Garp was laughing his head off. Ha ha ha, that's my boy, kicking butts and showing no mercy, Garp said as he heard a deep chuckle approaching. I see you installed your love for overkill in your student, you crazy monkey. An amused voice sounded causing Garp to give a wide grin. Never thought I'd hear a hero use the term overkill let alone the number two. I guess that proves fighters are made of tougher stuff right matchstick. Garp laughed as he approached and shock hands with Matchstick better known as Endeavor the Flame Hero, or his civilian name Enji Todoroki. The two had been friends since they were kids and had been training and competing against each other for years. 
THR2 went their separate paths in high school with Garp going on to focus on the battle tower and Inji going to Yue though the two meet up and spared against each other regularly. Eventually though life got too busy and had to say goodbye. In fact the last time they saw each other was at Endeavor's wedding with Garp as the best man. It's been too long Inji. How have you been since I've last seen you? Garp asked with Inji smirking as he pointed to the screen showing Shoto still in second crossing the fall. As you can tell I've been doing well especially since Shoto came along. He finished with pride. Speaking of family. Garp started his voice turned teasing. So how's Rai been doing? You two still together or did she wise up and leave you? Garp asked with a teasing grin. That grin however turned to a frown when he caught the brief look of shame guilt and regret on his friend's face before going back to normal. It was silent for a moment while Inji struggled to think of something to say before Garp sighed. Forget it, let's go back to enjoying the festival. Inji nodded though he was unable to shake off the feelings he currently had. When Shoto heard the announcement of Izuku taking first place he cursed. He knew there was a gap between the two but didn't think it was that big. An explosion and scream behind snapped him out of his thoughts as he returned to focus at the task at hand. He was currently in the minefield and had to focus on avoiding stepping on one. Icy hot. Don't think I'll let you win so easily, you bastard. An enraged shout came from behind as Bakugu appeared. I already lost to Deku, there's no way in hell I'm losing to you. And Katsuki Bakugo has caught up with Shoto Todoroki. It's the battle of second place between class 1A who's going to take it, present Mike shouted. Don't ask such questions, I already said I was, Bakugu shouted while trying to pull ahead before an idea came to him and he smirked. Any last words before I blow you up to the bronze medal, half and half? Bakugu asked with Todoroki raising an eyebrow. And just how do you plan to do that? Todoroki asked skeptical that he could really do it. Bakugu's smirk was feral, like this. He shouted sending an explosion right in front of Todoroki and onto a mine causing it to explode and Shoto was forced to jump back. And it was only then did he realize his mistake. Because as he saw Bakugu blast himself forward he had no way to stop himself from stepping on a landmine and getting blasted back. And that wasn't even the end of it. Todoroki and Bakugu were so far ahead, there were landmines everywhere so every time he landed he hit a landmine and was blasted further back eventually stopping in the middle of the pack. Bakugu meanwhile was in the home stretch with the finish line in sight however his thoughts were on different matters. Don't think I'll let you beat me that easily Todoroki, especially when it comes to Deku. I don't care who you are or how powerful your quirk is. I've been chasing his back since we were kids. Training day in and day out doing anything I could to close the gap between us even by an inch. So when a pompous bastard like you comes in and sprouts shit like that, I can't let that stand. He finished his thought with a roar as he blasted himself down the tunnel and over the finish line. Second place goes to Katuski Bakugu. Present Mike shouted as the stadium was filled in a deafening cheer as Bakugu let out a roar of victory as he let loose some explosions. Ha ha, the kid made a great move, Garp said with a smirk with Endeavor nodding in agreement. One would think he would be angry that his son was pushed back with such a trick and he was a little. But Endeavor could also appreciate good strategies and the one Bakugu performed was amazing. Bakugu has just calmed down when he heard footsteps behind him. That was a good plan you had back there he never saw it coming. Bakugu turned and saw Izuku coming over. Heh, that was just a taste of what's to come Deku. So forgot about the declaration of war Todoroki gave you? I'm the one who's going to defeat you in the end. Bakugu challenged with a smirk. What's this? Bakugu is calling out Midoriya. How well he respond. Present Mike commentated causing the audience to quiet down so they can hear the response. Izuku smirked. Bring it on. Just don't hold back or the beating I'll give you will be extra humiliating. There you have it. Midoriya has accepted the challenge, so it looks like we already have one grudge match to look forward to. Present Mike said with Aisawa rolling his eyes. 
Don't get ahead of yourself, Mike. We've got a long way to go before the one-on-one -on -one matches. Aizawa said causing present Mike to sulk. It wasn't long before the rest of the students finished with Shoto actually finished in 12th place. This was mainly due to the fact that after using his ice so much from avoiding the free falling stone robots, crossing the falls and making up lost ground in the minefield he was slowed and was unable to prevent several people from passing him. Endeavor was growling at the fact his son placed the way he did. Mostly due to the fact that had Shoto used his left side, he would have placed much higher. Shame about your boy matchstick. What's the matter he's saving his fire for later? Garp laughed, but then noticed another flinch from his friend. Damn it, Enji. What the hell did you do? Garp thought trying to figure out what happened to his old friend. Izuku in the meantime was talking with Ochako. Man Deku, you seriously weren't holding back. She laughed while trying to catch her breath. She had finished 16th place in the race. Izuku simply chuckled. It's like I said in my speech. I see everyone here as my rival to try anything less than my best would be an insult. Ochako nodded happily at the explanation before noticing something that caused her to spit laugh. What's up with Ida over there? Izuku looked over and raised an eyebrow when he saw his friend. The guy was even more robotic than normal and was mumbling something that because of his enhanced senses thanks to his various devil fruit, he was able to hear and once he did he couldn't help but chuckle. He's trying to figure out how he only got fifth. Izuku told her her with Ochako giggling. The first event is now over. Midnight announced when the last of the students finished. Now let's check out the standings, she announced as everyone saw how they placed. Only the top 42 students will move on to the next round. Let's see who they are, shall we? Unsurprisingly, all of classes 1A and 1B passed, with the other two being Mei Hatsum from Support and Hitoshi Shinso from General Studies. Now then, let's move on to the next game. Roll the roulette! Midnight shouted, and everyone was on the edge of their seats to see the next game, which turned out to be Calvary Battle. Midnight said as she saw what it was with some people confused on how this would work. Now the rules are simple. Students will team up in teams of two to four with a rider and horses and try and remove headbands from other competitors. Each headband will have the complete total of points each member of each team earned during the race which will be given in a moment. Now if your headband is taken don't be discouraged because that's not the end. Keep going until time is up. Headbands must be worn on the neck or up. There are only two ways to truly be eliminated, by purposely trying to knock another team down, or if a rider leaves his horses and lands on the ground. Other than that it's anything goes. Midnight finished her explanation as everyone nodded in understanding. And now for the points we go up by increments of 5 starting with 5 points at 42nd place. 10 points at 41st place, 15 points at 40th place, and so on and so forth with first place having 10 million. Midnight finished with everyone gaining predatory looks. It's not easy at the top, is it? Midnight questioned with a sadistic voice and smirk as everyone plotted to get those points. That is until the herd a dark chuckle and every one student turned to the source, which turns out to be Izuku Midoriya. Every student even Katsuki and Shoto took a step back when they saw the look on his face. You want it come and get it. Izuku challenged and the students suddenly remembered just who had the million points. Well it doesn't matter if you come at me or not. Hell it doesn't even matter who's on my team the outcome will be the same. Izuku continued with that same evil smirk. Oh and what is that outcome Deku? Bakugu growled while Izuku's smirk widened. That aside from my team, no one else will have a single point left. Everyone was left in a stunned silence. What else could happen after hearing something like that? If it was coming from anyone else, they would have been dismissed as arrogant and then crushed during the game. But it was Izuku Midoriya who said it, and if anyone could pull it off it would be him. With that it's time to begin. Everyone has 15 minutes to find their teams. Ready? Begin. Midnight yelled while waving her whip. Everyone scrambled in a panic to try and come up with any kind of plan. 
Izuku just smirked and shook his head as he left to go find his teammates. Let them try anything they want in the end, it won't matter. Round face join my team. Yuraraka was shocked beyond words to hear Bakugu asking her to join his team. Behind the explosion user was Ida and Kirishima looking ready to compete. Why would you want me Bakugu? She asked with Bakugu letting out a snort. My strategy of course, he said simply. With you, four eyes and spiky hair were going to make a hit and run team. Spiky hair, you'll be the front horse knock away anyone who comes at us from the front. Four eyes and round face, you'll be our mobility use your quirks to keep us out of anything unnecessary. With all of our combined points we're already in second place. If we grab a few more headbands while also avoiding Deku we should make it through. Bakugu explained causing them to nod. Man Bakugu you've really thought this out. Did Midoriya's threat scare you that much? Kirishima asked only to receive a harsh glare from Bakugu that made him back off. In truth though it did. Bakugu actually did watch Midoriya's matches over the years. At first it was to make up for how he treated him, but soon it was to try and find any way to bring Izuku down. A chink in the armor, anything that could help. It wasn't just Izuku either. Bakugu had seen many fighters in the world and Bakugu knew many could destroy even the strongest hero in a straight-up fight. So that's why Bakugu started to think more in his fights. His battle trial against Deku proved he needed to think more. And while he wasn't as good at strategizing as Izuku, Bakugu was fairly confident he could lead his team to survive whatever Izuku had planned. While Katsuki went with a hit-and-run tactic, Shoto decided to go with a full frontal assault, as he told his team. Kaminari, you take the front. With you there we've got an effective offense and defense. Ashido and Siro, you'll use your quirks to throw the other teams off balance without knocking them over. Shoto explained with his team nodding in understanding. Yeah, and with your fire and ice we're guaranteed to move on. Well, as long as we avoid Izuku, that is. Mina said cheerfully not noticing Shoto's dark look. That's not happening. I swore never to use my left side in battle. Shoto explained to the shocked faces of his team. So you plan on just using your ice for this game. Don't you think that's a little reckless? Remember it's not just you on the line here. Denki explained his worry with Hanta and Mina nodding in agreement. It will be enough. Shoto answered shortly. Even when we go up against Midoriya and his group. He told his team leading them to hang their mouths open in shock. You plan taking Izuku on at half power? Mina shouted. Being a huge fan of Izuku's, she knew a ton about how he fights and knew that a head-on attack with Izuku was suicide especially if at half power. My ice will be enough. It will. Shoto told them before muttering the last bit to himself as if to reassure himself. All the while his team nervously looks at each other as if trying to think of a something to win. Meanwhile Garp and Endeavor were talking going over all the teams and discussing their strengths and weaknesses. Endeavor was happy with the team his son created a fine assault team that could retreat if need be. So Garp, was what Midoriya said true? Can he really pull it off? Endeavor questioned his old friend who simply chuckled. Oh yeah, he'll do it. Izuku hates it when people boast like that and it turns out to be empty words. Trust me NG, this next event will be nothing short of a massacre. All right people, it's time to begin the cavalry battle. Present Mike shouted into the speakers causing the audience into cheer ready to see the next event. So how's this going to go down? Well we see an upset. And above all will Izuku Midoriya be able to keep his declaration of taking every other team's points. I'd say so given the team he's assembled. He said looking over the group Izuku was with that consisted of Fumikage Takoyami, Momo Yayurazu and Meihatsune, all of which looked extremely confident having been told the plan by Izuku. All righty people the teams are created and it's time to begin. Let's get the countdown started. 3. You guys remember the plan? Izuku asked his team who nodded all extremely happy with it despite having next to nothing if anything to contribute to it. We're ready Izuku it's perfect. Momo told him from his right. Indeed fate looks unkindly upon our opponents today. 
Fumikage said ominously in the front with dark shadow cackling at what's about happen. I knew joining you guys was the right choice, May said from the left excited for what's coming. 2. We'll start with Todoroki. He'll be so focused on Deku we can get the jump on him and get his headband. Bakugu explained causing his team to nod. There was a chance he wouldn't even notice if the look in his eyes was any indication. 1. We'll hit Midoriya right off the bat and catch him off guard understand. Shoto questioned his team, and while Hanada and Denki nodded uneasy Mina just grumbled under her breath. Begin. As soon as Mike said this Izuku jerked his index and middle fingers up, and suddenly a giant tower made of earth appeared from under Izuku and his team and lifted them in the sky and out of range from pretty much everyone else. Wow. Look at that team Midoriya is suddenly lifted high in the air. Is this the beginning of his strategy? Present Mike exclaimed while ignoring Aizawa's obviously. All right, let's begin. Izuku said before creating a clone who knowing what it needed to do jumped flew off the platform and landed on the ground as the other teams watched it wearily. The clone seeing this merely smirked before placing his hand on the ground and said two words. Black Abyss. Suddenly darkness flooded out of him as the other teams were shocked and confused as to what was happening as darkness covered the ground of the arena. Amongst all the confusion there were only two people who realized what Izuku was planning as Mina and Katsuki's eyes widened in realization and horror when they figured out what Izuku's plan was. Guys he's going to take away our quirks. Mina yelled out in panic as the other students' eyes widened in confusion and disbelief. All the clone did was smirk to late. It spoke as it made its next move. Abyssal reach. It spoke as hands of darkness shot out of the ground and grabbed each of the students except for Toru to the confusion of her teammates. It was silent for a moment until there was a commotion coming from Team Minta and when they turned to see what was going on everyone from the teams to the audience pro heroes and civilians alike gasped as Miso Shoji lost his extra limbs and his two remaining tentacles turned back into regular hands. With the loss of his quirk, he could no longer support his two teammates who soon also lost their quirks as Tsuyu lost her frog abilities and had to become a horse to help support Minta, who actually gained a mohawk after his quirk disappeared and his balls fused together. This was happening all over the field as the teams lost the abilities to use their quirks. The most noticeable were ones like Siro, Ibarra and Kayoka since their quirks were made of certain body parts thus transformed into regular shoulders hair and ears respectively. Though people like Mina and Koda kept their unique body features since they had nothing to do with their quirks. At least we know why Izuku didn't attach any of those hands to Toru. Jiru said dryly as Toru didn't have on a uniform and thus would have been exposed nude for the whole world to see. Though she did hear the invisible girl mumbling something about getting Izuku to help her with something later. Bakugu glared at the hand grabbing his elbow and tried once again to yank it off only for his hand to go through it like every other time he tired. Damn it! He cursed in his mind as he glared at the smirking clone who was being attacked by Shoto's team, though nothing they tried hit as their attacks just connected with light, smoke or various other elements. The bastard got us again, Bakugu thought as he grit his teeth as he ordered his team to go after the other teams while trying to use his quirk again only to get nothing causing him to curse again. Look at that, Izuku Midoriya has taken away the quirks of all the other teams. Talk about a crippling blow, present Mike exclaimed with the audience cheering in excitement. It's a killing blow actually Mike. Aizawa said having given in and decided to commit to being a commentator if at nothing else to stop people from being corrupted by Mike's moronic nonsense. With the loss of their quirks the other teams have lost all ways to reach the top of that tower as it's too smooth to scale not to mention if they do try and climb, fall and hit the ground they're out. He's essentially secured his team's place in the third round. What about his statement from earlier? about being the only team with points left. Could it have been a bluff? Present Mike asked in confusion with Aizawa shaking his head. With a defense like that there would be no need for one. No he diffidently meant it. 
How he plans to do this, we'll just have to wait and see. Izuku smirked hearing this. Well you heard Mr. Izawa let's not keep them waiting. He said as he created another clone whose body turned into a murder of crows of at least fifty. The crows flew in the air, all looking at the original who said a single word, Go! And that's what they did. It was chaos in the arena as each team was assaulted by at least four crows with one always being able to take the headbands while the others were distracting them. The few times someone was able to hit one of the crows they hit some kind of the element like with the clone creating the darkness. It took two minutes for the crows to gather the headbands and get back to Izuku who soon had everyone except his own around his neck while his own around his forehead. I can't believe it. Team Midoriya actually pulled it off. Everyone else is at zero while they managed to secure everyone for themselves. Has something like this ever happened before? Present Mike shouted at the top of his lungs going crazy like a good deal of the audience. Not sure. But the real question now is where do we go from here like I said before it's not like any of the other teams can reach them. Aizawa said, and even though he kept his voice steady, he was just as impressed as Mike. Well, Principal Nezu, what should we do? This hasn't happened before. Ectoplasm asked while Nezu thought about it for a second. Let's leave it to midnight since she's the umpire. Contact her and tell her the decision is hers. After being told of the principal's decision, she thought about it for a second before answering. There are ten minutes left if they want to end the match early team Midoriya must subdue and immobilize the other teams. She decided as the audience cheered and the team sighed in relief that they still had a chance. Well you heard them any ideas Izuku? Momo questioned with Izuku thinking about it for a second before nodding. Momo create a cannon and has many of those sticky bombs as you can. Will us my clone to trap them like you did at the Usti. Izuku told them his plan but Momo had an issue. Izuku they're scattered all other the place and it's not like they have anything else to focus on. They'll know who we're targeting before we even fire. At this Takoyami just raised an eyebrow, then simply create more cannons with enough of them they can't keep track of all of the shots. He told Momo, who suddenly gained a depressed look. You guys are seriously overestimating my power. I can maybe create three cannons, but even then that would simply waste most of my lipids. Momo said depressed that she couldn't be more helpful. Izuku just raised an eyebrow. So it's a matter of power. If it's that simple I can just give you some of mine. He said simply causing all of his team, even Dark Shadow, to look at him in shock. I, I, Izuku, what do you mean give me some of power? Momo questioned with Izuku just activated the power power fruit as indicated by the purple glow it was now emitting. Exactly as I said, one of my powers lets me manipulate power or energy. So I'll just give you some of that. Naturally I'll do the same for Fumikage and Mei to help them in the next round. Izuku said with them becoming even more shocked. Why me though? We literally meet twenty minutes ago. I literally told you I was using you, Mei shouted. Normally she wouldn't say anything, but this was Izuku Midoriya, the strongest man in the world. Well, Momo and Fumikage because they're my classmates and I know I can trust them because of the drive I've seen in their pursuits to become heroes. As for you Mei you're my teammate and friend plus you're truly passionate of your work, Izuku explained to the three shocking them. All three were blown away by his reasons. Fumikage and Dark Shadow felt their respect for the man rising as they found themselves standing up straighter. Here was the strongest man in the world willing to him a bit of his power to help him get ahead simply because he was impressed by his determination. That just raised Fumikage's determination to do well and prove it wasn't wasted. Mono and Mei were touched by what Izuku said. May specifically since she just met the guy and was already praising her like that. Momo because she felt she's done nothing to deserve it. Sure she helped him a little in the battle trial and helped with their class rep responsibilities but that was it. She wasn't even able to help that much in the US she just capture some villains before grabbing an enemy weapon and trying to stay alive. Izuku meanwhile was able to attack villains and give out orders to help their class. That's what Momo respected the most about Izuku he was born leader. 
a captain if she had to be specific. So when he offered her this, she was a bit hesitant to take it wondering if she should take it. Are, are you sure? She asked receiving a nod, she turned to her other teammates, she got a nod from Fumikage and a grin and thumbs up from May. Momo took a deep breath and nodded. Izuku smirked placing his hands on Momo and Fumikage's heads while using the flower flower fruit to create a third hand which he proceeded to place on May's head. A second later the group was enveloped in a purple flash. What's going on with Team Midoriya? They've suddenly been covered in a purple light. Present Mike voiced his confusion. When the purple light died down Team Midoriya was revealed and it looked like nothing changed however the team themselves knew that wasn't the case. Fumikage, Momo and Mei had never felt stronger in their lives as they could feel the power coursing through them. Izuku what is this? I've never felt like anything like this before. As she could feel her body and mind open up to her. Truly, I feel as if I'm in the dead of night and yet I'm in complete control. Fumikage told them overwhelmed by this new sensation while Dark Shadow was laughing loving the sensation. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, was all May could say having never felt anything like this before. Izuku meanwhile was trying to figure out what happened having done this before but never having seen this effect before. He shock his head clearing his thoughts, he could worry about this later. Momo try creating two cannons. Izuku asked with Momo nodding and focusing on creating the cannons, and the result was amazing to say the least as ten cannons appeared, and the only sigh of fatigue was her slightly heavier breathing. Though she was more focused on other things at the moment. I did that? She questioned faintly as she and the rest of her teammates stood dumbstruck. Indeed. It seems like Midoriya has strengthened our quirks to new levels. Takoyami answered while wondering what he could now. May meanwhile decided to get everyone back on track. Hey guys, we can figure this out later right now, we need to focus on ending the game. Izuku nodded while also creating enough clones to man the cannons. She's right, these will be more than enough. Momo start creating those sticky bombs. Hopefully we can capture the teams before you reach your limit. He told Momo who nodded and did what she asked. Soon sticky bombs were flying down on the helpless teams. Some were able to dodge at first, but as more teams were caught and more cannons focused on the remaining teams, it became that much harder to evade. The last team left was Bakugus who lasted a good five minutes before it became too much and they were hit. Midnight seeing everyone stuck with none being able to escape decided it was enough. The game is over. Team Midoriya wins. So, this was the end of part 3 of this series. Stay tuned for next part of this series and if you like this video don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Until next time.